Welcome everyone. My name is Evan Ortlieb and today we're going to talk about reliability versus validity. Let's go on and get into it. Know that there are three types of reliability we're going to be looking at today. The first type is test retest. And that means you're measuring the stability of a test over time. Take for instance, IQ tests or aptitude tests. If you take that, let's say this week, and you also take it again next week, you should score similarly across those because IQ typically is considered to be something that's stable over time. Therefore, it's also not effective when, it, when we think about affective domain or variables like that, such as interest, attitude, and, and motivation or mood, for instance. The second kind of reliability is inner rater. And that means that different observers are consistent in their judgments of the same phenomenon. Take, for instance, uh, the slam dunk competition, right? And somebody, somebody does a dunk, they get a 10, somebody gives a nine, somebody gives a five, right? What's going on there? Turns out that there should be training done for observers in order to ensure high levels of inner rater reliability. Typically, this is reported in either percentages or correlation coefficients, and those can be low, moderate, or high in nature. The third kind of reliability is internal consistency. And that means if you have, let's take a test where we're going to be measuring uh, self-esteem, if you will, and there are two parts to that test, do each of those parts um, give a similar rating of sorts to somebody's self-esteem. And that would ensure that there's strong correlation between both of those sets to the overall composite test. If we shift now to validity. We're thinking about three other um, uh, types of validity. The first is content. And that's the extent to which the measurement actually covers the concept being measured or tried to be measured. Do you remember those tests in college? Let's say biology, you were in a big class and you had uh, 50 questions on the multiple choice test, and there were just some questions that came out of left field. You never covered that content. They weren't covered in the book, weren't covered in the lectures. Those components led to an invalid test because it didn't actually measure what, um, what was actually experienced, if you will. The second kind of validity is construct. We're talking about the connection to theory and knowledge about the concept being measured. So take in a test of reading motivation, for instance, that could show highly correlated levels of associated traits, such as self-esteem. Then if that's the case, we know that there are high levels of construct, construct validity, that is. And the third kind of validity is criterion. That's the extent to which a measure corresponds to other valid measures of the same content. Take for instance, do political surveys accurately predict presidential outcomes, if you will? And if that is the case, then those particular ones would have high criterion validity. That's the differences between reliability and validity. I hope that you've learned a little bit here today. I hope you smash the like button and consider, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel where we're talking about education for today. Have a great day and take care.